Welcome back guys, and today we're checking out the MLC S Sub-Zero Amp Sim. That was my little intro song there that I wrote for this demo. But before we get into the review, I just want to mention that if you would like for me to work on your music, shoot me an email at divinemotherstudios at gmail.com. I'd love to hear details about your project. Let's get into it. All right, so this kind of amp sim went on my radar um, a couple months back when I bought a course for mixing death metal and stuff like that um, from a guy that I follow frequently. And he kind of didn't make the best first impressions on this. I kind of was left with the feeling that I wasn't exactly what I was looking for. But, you know what? I ended up just trying out the demo anyways. And I think I jumped the gun in a previous video where I said the Josh Middleton plugin was the best amp sim of 2023. I'm honestly going to say that this is pretty close to that too. So now I'm pretty split 50-50. And I think I may have found my two Desert Island plugins. If I ever need to just use any plugins in a desert island situation it would be this one and the josh middleton plugin the mlc is slightly lower gain than the josh middleton one that is a 5150 and a triple rectifier so you're getting three amps in one and this one you're only getting one but you're getting three different channels so you're getting a clean channel a mid gain channel and a distortion channel it's pretty standard you get all the amenities of your standard modern amp sims nowadays but i will admit that the interface is absolutely gorgeous is 100% one of my favorite user interfaces that I have used. Now, we do have two overdrives here. One seems to be more of an old school overdrive with a bass and treble knob, which would be considered the white and the blue, which would be this here and this here. And then you got a custom overdrive here. I don't know what it is based on, but Jens Bogren says it's just a custom overdrive that he had made and then recreated on the digital model. You get a cabinet section, with two different cabinets. From what it seems to me, this is like a Mesa Boogie Vintage 30 kind of thing. And then this other one that's the vintage seems to be like a Greenback Marshall. You get a Studio EQ to kind of tweak the sound even further on the post side of things. And then you get some post effects like a delay and a reverb if you are into that kind of thing as well. It's really useful for solos and etc. Now on the amp head side of things, it's a very simple interface. You got a gate. You got your presence and depth knobs, which are tied to the power section. Your low feed and your high feed are the type of saturation that gets implemented for the power section. So high feed is like higher gain on the power section and low feed is more typical of a, an old school Marshall Plexi kind of style. At least that's from what the manual was referencing. And then you got your bass, middle, and treble. Now, I forgot to mention that the low feed only affects channel one, but channels two and three do have their own version of this low feed circuit which is the M45 circuit. And from what I can tell what it does, it actually emulates more of a Marshall style circuit. So when you have it on, the circuit produces less gain, which is slightly different than where if you were to just turn down the gain with the gain knob. So it's a slightly different topology. You got your 6L6 and EL34 variants, and then you got a master volume for the entirety output of the plugin. Now, the one thing I will say that sets this plugin apart from all the other amp sims that are out there currently is this RDX technology on the cabinet side. Now, I thought this was proprietary to just their IR, but apparently you can load your own IRs as well, and this is kind of a process that they put on your IRs on the post side of things. Now, I'm not entirely sure what it's exactly doing, but from what I was told is that they are modeling the actual movement of a speaker as well as the distortion and compression that a speaker adds when it's pushed versus being just a static IR, which does not contain any of that information. So let's kind of just check out what we got here. This is kind of just a preset that I found and I just liked it and so it's what I loaded up. <laughs> So 
pretty good so far. It's pretty mid-rangey. Let's see if we could try a different preset here. Uh, let's see, what do we got here? Let's try Manly Metal. <laughs> I'm digging it. I really am. Um, it definitely has a lot more realism than a lot of the other amp sims. I'm not gonna lie. I know Neural DSP is the kings. Everyone is using them. I know on the latest Zenith Passage record, but directly from the source that they actually used the Granifier plugin, and the tones are fantastic on that record. But I don't know. After playing around with the Josh Middleton and the MLC, um, I feel like those are kind of starting to fall behind a little bit because these sound a lot more real than the Neural DSP ones. The only one that I think still kind of holds up very well would be the Nameless Suite. It just sounds nothing like it, but that is more of a one trick pony kind of amp simulator. This has multiple tricks in the bag that you can pull from just like the Josh Middleton. So let's go ahead and check out some clean tones. Let's see if I can find a preset here that has some cleans. Yeah, let's try this uh, Emperor clean here. <laughs> Pretty cool. A bit of a breakup clean. Switch it to some single coils. Pretty good, I like it. Um, I feel like it can cover most needs for most metal musicians in terms of a clean tone, but we're not really here to check out clean tones. We're here to check out the other two channels, which would be the mid and the high gain. So moving on to the second channel, I kind of have it set up to emulate the best that I could, a more Van Halen kind of 80 style tone. And I have to admit, I am extremely impressed with how close I feel like I got to it. Of course, we can never become Eddie, but we can always try. I have it set to just one SM57, right up the middle on the speaker cabinet, on the vintage cabinet, just like how Van Halen would do it in the 80s. And let's just check out how that sounds. <laughs> I could definitely do mid gain tones extremely well. I am utterly impressed with how that sounds. Going back to channel three, but staying on the cabinet section here, we're gonna check out what this IDR technology sounds like. It allows you to turn it off completely or just kind of have it at a minimum if you would like. Uh, I guess it defaults to 100%. Again, I wish I could tell you guys exactly what it does, but unfortunately, not really sure what they're modeling here, but it is doing something. So I'm gonna start with it off. I'm gonna pump it back in and then you guys leave me a comment below and let me know if you guys hear a difference. That was with it off. Let's go ahead and check it out with it on.
at least to me, it sounds like it's adding some high end, maybe some harmonics distortion. I'm not really sure. There's definitely some compression going on. I wish I could put my finger on it, but it is doing something. I can't really quantify in language what it's doing. I can only describe the added, I don't know, texture. Is that even something that I can say? Not really sure. But let's check out some leads now that we're here. Let's see if we can find some leads. It was this eagle lead. I love Demu, so if we can get some leads out of this. <laughs> Sounds great to me. Let's try this lead of the pack. Oh, it's more of like a creamy lead. Red lead by two men. <laughs> I'm a little glassy, I like that though. It sounds really, really good. See, let's turn off this RDX technology that lead. Now I'm going to turn it back on. Hmm. On leads, I'm not hearing too much of a difference. It's definitely more present with the rhythms. So there you have it. That is my playthrough of the MLS Sub Zero 100. MLC, excuse me. I have to admit, I really enjoyed playing this plugin. I'm really considering picking it up myself. There's always something to be added within the toolbox. Again, if I had to limit myself to Desert Island plugins, this would definitely be on the list, with, along with the Josh Middleton plugin that we recently got a couple months back. This is fantastic. I'm young. Jens Bogren is definitely onto something with this plugin. I highly recommend it. If you're a beginner, I might maybe go more with Jens single knob plugins, but if you're more of an advanced guy, or you're doing more mixing stuff like I am, I would definitely consider adding this tool to your toolbox. It's just a slightly different flavor than maybe a 5150 or a Mesa Boogie triple rectifier. And it's always good to have um, choices, but maybe not too many. So just maybe just pick up those two, call it a day. But nevertheless, if you enjoyed this video, I appreciate it if you give me a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.